Hello, this is Frontline here and welcome to a Minecraft Bedrock Redstone video. Today we are going to be talking about the T flip-flop. A flip-flop in computing is a mechanism that allows for memory to be stored as long as power is available. This is actually the basis for the random access memory in your computer or RAM. But uh, today we're talking about Minecraft Redstone and because it doesn't require a power source, it can be activated at will. Flip-flops are very useful constructs within the game. So, a T flip-flop is a special case of a flip-flop. It has a T at the beginning of his name because it's a toggle. When you give a redstone pulse into a system, it switches the system either to an on or an off state. The best way to describe this functionality is to compare it as putting a button into a lever. So uh, when you try and do a button, it only gives a, a small redstone pulse. We want it so that whenever you actually press the pulse of the button, it stays on like a lever would. When you uh, press the lever, it actually uh, flicks it and keeps it on for the duration that it stays. So uh, then you can like uh, flick it on and off and stuff. It's like, that's basically the uh, main idea of it. So let's go to our first example. I've already built it over here. Uh, this, while it may seem large, is a uh, very basic uh, system of a T flip-flop. So uh, the input is right here, the button. It can really be anywhere on this redstone line. And the output could be either one of these blocks. Whichever one you want the signal to come out of, that's where your output is. So uh, the idea of this thing is that the redstone block is the toggle. So it can either be in this position, the on position, or where it is right now in the off state. How this goes is that uh, whenever the redstone block is in either state, it sends a signal looping round to the repeater, locking it. When you actually uh, press the button, the locked repeater isn't actually given the signal. It only goes to the opposite way. That allows it for the, the uh, piston that doesn't have the redstone block, it grabs the block away from its other position and uh, is able to just toggle it to either side. It flips and it flops. So anyway, in this video today, uh, we're not going to go too much into detail about this design. This design is very large, it's bulky. Uh, you can of course copy it if you want to. You can make a screenshot right now. But uh, today we're actually gonna go into five different designs of T flip-flops and hopefully one of them you'll be able to use for your redstone contraptions in the future. Our first design of the day is actually a simplified and more compact version of the example we just saw. So uh, with this one you're going to need a 3x4 area with two little poke bits out the side. We're going to want to be able to place our uh, pistons on the sides of the blocks, we're going to be able to have a block of redstone. It can be in either position. It doesn't really matter for the beginning. It just is able to uh, toggle between two different states. So here we have the repeaters running out of the two places the redstone block could be. Those repeaters will be running into blocks here that will lead on a, a torch tower. So we're going to put these up here, have torches on the sides of the blocks, then right here, you're going to want to place temporary blocks here. You're going to want one here and one here. You can break the ones below them. You, those won't actually be needed. You'll want to place repeaters facing this way from the torches. Put uh, blocks all along here. You'll want uh, blocks actually next to the pistons as well, just by the way. Uh, I'm just going to put that now so that we don't have to do it later. Redstone dust on top of those blocks on top of those have the redstone rep repeaters go into those blocks that lead downwards into that redstone bit put redstone in the middle and you now have a t flip-flop uh, the button is optional really you could also have a signal lead into it like this you could uh, try and lead it from somewhere else in the system but uh, as you can see the uh, whole entire system works like that you can Press the button, it just activates one of the pistons on either side. And uh, due to the uh, redstone repairs going up here, it, it just basically is a more compact version of the example we just saw. It's not exactly the most uh, compact version that we're going to cover in this video, 
but it is a version that uh, kind of utilizes some cool redstone features. And uh, your output could either be from this redstone block here, uh, either one of them. It could also be ran out the back here. You don't even need actual uh, redstone repeater to do that. You could just have dust running out of it just because the repeater is already powering the block. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could power this, even by the torches. But uh, yeah, that's basically the uh, system. And uh, let's move on to another example that we're going to be doing in this video. All right, so for this design, you'll need a 4x3 area, but you'll actually need more to be able to activate the system. But we'll get into that at the end of this. For now, we're just going to uh, build it as it is. So we have sticky pistons in the middle of this 4x3 area with block of redstone in either position, it doesn't matter which one you started off at. So you can have sticky pistons running here, got blocks of redstone there. The blocks of iron or any kind of block, any block can be used, uh, will go on top of where the uh, redstone blocks could be here. You want to have repeaters running on top of those, running into blocks. Then you'll want to have redstone torches on both sides have a block of iron at the top, have blocks of, well, anything. <laughs> I uh, say blocks of iron, but that's just because that's the material I'm using for you to be able to see this uh, system the best. You'll want to be able to have sticky pistons running on the sides of the dust. So you can see that I'm touching the hitbox. I'll place it right there so that it's in alignment with the dust. On these, you can place any type of block on the faces of these uh, sticky pistons, and uh, there's basically your T flop, flip flop. To activate it, you are going to have to build out a little bit larger. So, uh, basically, how it'll work is you run it out like this, you'll have repeaters going here with redstone here, put down a button, and I realize now that we actually forgot something. We need to place redstone on top of these pistons. And you may be thinking that this won't work and that the redstone will pop off. Well, in the Bedrock Edition, they actually uh, have a, a feature that uh, now redstone is allowed to stay on top of there and it doesn't pop off, which is actually very useful for this T flip flop because if we press it, it's able to uh, send the signal through whichever block is down. Uh, the block would then be able to uh, power the uh, piston via the redstone dust here, pull back the redstone block to whatever side it needs to go on, and uh, it basically uh, swaps the uh, system over. So that's how the thing works. You can have the uh, system display an output through whatever you want to. You can have redstone dust coming out of this redstone block here. You could try and have redstone repeater coming out of uh, this block here, I believe. No, you can't. <laughs> uh, you have to have it out of uh, this block here. Basically, wherever the redstone tiles, you're able to have a signal out of it. These T flip flops are very versatile due to that fact. So you can see that the redstone up here, when this uh, redstone block lifts, it would be able to send a signal that is toggleable and uh, there's various different places you can have it. The one place you should, yeah, ne never mind. So the places where it is powered, you can have it, and that will be able to have your toggle system like that. This next design, I am not able to call my own, but I actually don't know who designed it first. So I saw it first on the Mumbo Jumbo channel on his video on T flip flops but I don't know if he designed it or if it was someone else. So uh, I can't really give credit for this one, but uh, let's just dive into this thing, shall we? So what you wanna do is be able to have an upward facing dropper right here. This is actually gonna be the dropper that you have your uh, input going into. So you could have a button on the side or you could uh, even just have a block uh, below that has a repeater running directly into it. It's just that you can't have a block in between to power this thing. It has to power this dropper directly. So uh, whatever, however you power it, just make sure that it's going into that dropper. Then what you want to do is be able to have a dropper on top of this one facing in this direction. Then you have a dropper that faces into the upwards facing one back here 
and then the hopper leading directly down into this one here. So you have a system like this, you put an item inside of here, and then you're basically done. How you uh, actually get an output from this thing is that you have a, a comparator running outward for the purposes of this video. I'm just going to show a redstone lamp so that you can see a very visual representation. So uh, once I press the button, it powers on. Once I press it again, it powers off. So uh, how it works is that the redstone dust can either be in two places. It can either be in this dropper or it can be in this one. How redstone timing works is that uh, the redstone actually uh, use, utilizes the powered block before the activated one. This one gets powered, so it moves the item up here, and then the game checks, okay, now let's work on all the activated blocks surrounding it. So after that, this item that was moved from there in the same tick is then moved to this hopper. The hopper doesn't need to get powered at all. It just is able to move the item down into here. So already in one uh, fell swoop, it was able to travel up around here and into here, allowing for the comparator to be able to give out a signal. When you uh, press the button again, it ends up making it so that uh, when the item is in here, it first checks this dropper, which has nothing in it. And uh, because it has nothing, it just moves on to the activated one. The activated one moves the item back into this dropper and allows for the whole system to be reset. That's a lot of explanation, but that's how it works. It's a very small, compact system. It's a, a little bit hard to build, but I would totally suggest it for survival. It's very much worth it, even though it has the directionality of the droppers that you may need to uh, refresh yourself on every time you build it. I know that for this tutorial video, I actually had to build this three times before I got it right. So uh, don't uh, be too down on yourself if you don't get this thing right the first time without following a tutorial. These next two T flip-flop designs were an attempt to be able to simplify the whole entire weirdness that happened in the last example. So uh, these are not as compact, but they are a lot easier to build and they are more compact than traditional piston designs that you can use in the Bedrock Edition. So here we're going to have directional droppers, but they're very easy to do. All you need to do is have the hopper droppers go one into the other. Then you have comparators running out the side, have blocks up from those, torches on the sides of those, repeaters running from them, blocks up like that, and uh, that's basically the uh, system. What you need to do is have redstone on the top to be able to activate it. You can uh, grab yourself a, a button to be able to do it. It can really be on uh, either part. You can even have it here and it would still work to be able to activate both of them. But uh, for this example, we're just gonna have a button here, redstone dust on top. Both of the droppers need to be powered. Remember that both need to be able to be powered for this thing to work. And also never forget that you should have an item inside of your dropper so that it doesn't fail. So uh, how this whole entire system works is the idea that if a dropper is powered, it cannot be powered a second time. So over here, you can see that because this one doesn't have an item inside of it, it actually uh, has a redstone signal going towards it that uh, activates this block. If I uh, power it, it's not able to be reactivated. It only would power this block that does not have any power running towards it. Thus, this piece of redstone would immediately go into this one without this one retaliating and just uh, sending the item back to its original location. So it actually does work. It flips the signal from one to the other and uh, the output can really be from anywhere you want it to be. You could end up just having a, a redstone line going from here because the uh, repeater is powering that block. It uh, allows for this signal to be transferred forward or really anywhere. So remember that any place where a redstone signal is activated that can be toggled from one side to the other is a viable output solution for this whole entire circuit. But as you may have noticed, 
This is not really that simple to build. The next example, the last one for this video today, is the most simple and easiest one to build. Not the most compact, but it is most definitely my favorite of all the designs. I have organized my inventory in a strategic way. This one is an extremely simple T flip flop to build. It's not the most compact design in the world, but if you have a creative mode world that you want to build a bunch of T flip flops in, this is the design I would suggest for you. Here in my uh, quick select, I have a dropper, a comparator, a repeater, block, any kind of block can do. I use iron, that's just like personal preference. Torch, sticky piston, block of redstone, and the button is only the activation mechanism. You can have any kind of activation mechanism you want, like a repeater or uh, something else. This is just merely a way to do it really quickly and like have a demonstration for you guys. So the first seven items are required. This eighth one is more of a optional kind of thing that will vary from situation to situation. And also, don't forget that you do need items to be able to put into the droppers as well. I have a, just a stack of redstone dust here so that I can uh, do it pretty quickly and uh, create multiple designs. But uh, yeah, you can use whatever item you want to. So anyway, let's go here. This right here, you'll want a dropper here, dropper here, they face into each other. Comparators running out the side, then we got repeaters, any kind of block, redstone torches above those blocks, sticky pistons running out, blocks of redstone, make sure that you have a item inside of the thing. And uh, there, basically that's your system done. When I press this button, it will uh, be able to uh, swap the system. It basically uses the uh, same idea as the other one. Because there's a redstone block here, it activates this dropper, allowing it so that this item, or this dropper is the only one that gets powered and allows for it to uh, send the item here without any kind of uh, glitches or problems. So there's your T flip flop. You can take the signal out from anywhere. You can take it from the uh, redstone repeaters, from the torches, from the blocks, even from the contents of the dropper. But uh, just to show you how fast I can build this thing though, we can be able to uh, do these two designs. We're gonna have a timer on screen to actually see how fast I do this. I'm actually curious as to how fast I can do this. While commenting, it might be hard. But uh, anyway, let's uh, go here. Time will start now. We can uh, be able to place those there. Comparators, repeaters, blocks, torches. Got pistons, got the redstone, got the dust here. The dust is the part that takes the longest and bam, we have a system. So there we go. That's very easy to be able to build right there. Let's see if we can get the next one a little bit faster. So time starts now. Bam, bam, I'm gonna put in the item early just to make things a little bit easier. We'll see if it affects my time at all. We've got, oh, that will definitely affect my time negatively. And uh, there we go, we have a, a working system. I don't count the button as a part of the working system. So if you notice that the timer stopped before before I actually press the button on. That's the reason why, it, honestly, the button isn't part of the system, it's more of like part of the input to the system. So, there we go. Those were uh, definitely very quick to build nice little designs. And uh, yeah, hopefully you will be able to use them in your own redstone builds as well. But anyway, that is all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, learned a little bit more about T flip flops, or uh, maybe even some of you didn't know what a T flip flop is, and then you learned a lot from the whole entire thing as we got from uh, larger designs and compacted them on the way to uh, the most simple design you can make in creative mode. Again, I would most definitely suggest this design if you're going in survival mode. But if you're in creative and just have enough space and time, those designs are definitely the ones I would suggest for you. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you demand a world download, I can provide that. For now, I'm not going to provide a world download at the moment. But uh, nonetheless, I will see you guys in the next Redstone video. Bye.